Greetings guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Monette and this is my channel, Evolve with Monette. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's time to rise and shine. My mom would sing that to me all the time. Still does to this day. Still calls me to this day. Uh, not every day, but some days and surprises me and sings me that song. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's time to rise and shine. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? I am doing good, doing great. I already said, how are you? All right, so let's jump into the subject at hand. Closure. Ah, it's what's for dinner, right? It's beef, it's what's for dinner. Closure is what's for dinner after beef, maybe. <laughs> Even if you don't have beef. Here's the thing. Uh, I don't know what the title's going to be yet, but something to the effects of the narcissist doesn't want you to have closure, and here's why. But when you have closure, then you are so incredibly set free. And I would always push for it if you can in any incarnation in your reality. Let me explain. Most of us have been, if you're on this channel, into a narcissistic relationship. We have been with someone who refused to answer questions, who refused to give us clarity, who refused to communicate at all. They just literally shut down and removed themselves and their energy and were like, I can't even deal or whatever the case may be. We all have had situations like that. Now, they do it as a power tactic because what they're hoping is if they can keep you in the quagmire in your head, that you will forever be tethered to them, thinking that you were deficient, defunct, or whatever, because hashtag narcissism. I'm not even going to spend too much time on that. There are a million videos here on YouTube about narcissists and closure and silent treatments and you going cold and silent treating them and gray rocking and no contact. There, you know, it's silent treatment to the no contact girl i see you i raise you it's a whole thing so we all know that part but the part that i want to focus on today is the positive part do you know that if you have closure it literally shifts your energy immediately i had a situation in my life where i had to do uh, a, a, a moment of closure i needed to have closure that that elusive word now here's what i'm going to tell you I think the reason I got this is because I went through the trenches with the narcissist and and many narcissists too, because it wasn't just one, but the last, the major one, the covert one, I went through the trenches with the narcissist and would, would not receive a word because they were, narcissists are toddlers, so they're emotionally stunted in their growth, so they'll like hold their breath till they turn blue and they die. Does that make sense? They're ignorant. So they're like, I'm not going to say anything, even though they want to talk or whatever, because that's their last vestiges of power. People that are healthy and balanced, even upon disagreement, can have closure though. And I feel like I got the positive side of closure in a situation because I had such an extremely toxic side. Often as a practitioner and a teacher, I will go through things that are like, like turned up to 5,011. And let me explain what I mean by that. 333 just now on the clock. 333 is associated with Ascended Masters, guys. So, and it's, a, it's an incredible angel number. Go look that up. Um, Yeah, so that's my, ma that's my Ascended Masters telling me, yes, Monette, we gave you a good version of closure because you had such a terrible version of, regarding the narcissist what happens with the narcissist is you will give yourself your own closure and it was a powerful lesson and as a teacher i got taught that lesson so i could teach it to you and it meant that i got nothing when i say nothing not a word not an apology not the wait that's not true um well no 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 she didn't apologize she did one of the narc apologies you know she said something like i'm perfectly imperfect which now if i hear that shit i'm triggered <laughs> triggered like shaking camera triggered right but um i'm perfectly imperfect <laughs> they're so funny i was listening to a meditation and a mantra last night and i've listened to it all the time and in in it it says i'm perfectly imperfect and i love it. it's like one of my go-to like go to sleep meditation mantras and that part every time i'm like eh, I 
anytime I hear perfectly imperfect because that narcissists love to apologize by not apologizing. That's their favorite freaking thing. Um, and gaslighting you anyway. Okay. So here's the deal. So I went through and I had the worst version of closure you could ever have. I had to give myself every single scrap of it. There was no real apology. There was never any real accountability. There was never any, uh, not even real. There was no accountability. There was no explanation. It was nothing. Zip zero stingy with the Nero, meaning the currency of that narc's energy was exactly as, um, as, as wealthy as their moral compass. You know, it didn't exist. So I had to do it all. And I was like, dang, guys. <laughs> uh, that was, I was like, damn, I just want to rot. But yeah, yeah. I really, really felt so upset, which is exactly how they want you to feel, but not at the narc. I knew the narc was going to narc. I knew what they weren't capable of. I was upset because I was like, y'all, angels, ancestry, spirit team, I'm out here doing the Lord's work. I'm out here in the trenches, in the streets, with my clients, with friends, with family, with loved ones, and I am doing exactly what I am supposed to do. And why did you make this the most incredibly hard thing ever? And they said, because, because you did this, we always get repaid back for the sacrifices we made. They said, because you did this, we're going to turn the next time that closure is necessary for you in whatever capacity and situation, it's going to be one of the best experiences you ever had. And I just, I just had it. I had the best experience regarding closure, uh, a, a matter of differences and seeing things differently. Sometimes I come on here, guys, and I talk to you and I'm like, this thing happened and it was horrible and the person was horrible. I don't have that to say. Even with uh, fundamental differences at play for both parties involved, there was nothing but it was the best ever, ever, ever. I felt like I finally got repaid for being in the trenches of, 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 of the situation with that person. I was so grateful. Listen, y'all, again, how Scorpio was set up in my chart, and this may be not relevant for you, but I have had lots of lessons about the fact that you don't get to keep people, that people are in your life forever, and that things are transient sometimes, and maybe um, that's going to have to be what it is for you. <clears throat> oh, throat chakra hit. Oh, that's interesting. That's going to have to be what it is for you. So, I pay attention to that. I pay attention to all of the signs. I don't, I don't put 20 on 10. I don't embellish it. I really, because honestly, um, guys, what do you guys know after you go through narcissistic abuse, you're actually a lot more reticent to share your energy, your time or your whatever with anybody. You know, you're reticent maybe to be in another relationship. You're reticent for another friendship, another connection because you instinctively are like, mm. What F-ish is this person going to be on? Well, sometimes it's not toxic. Everyone's not all, like, like totally, totally toxic and evil. We all have things that we've learned. We all can be emotionally manipulative. We all can be not 100% honest. We all can be left to center. We all can be honest. We all can be kind. We all can be compassionate. We all have capacity when we're mostly balanced to be all of these things and exist in dualities that may not rub the other person well or may rub the other person well. Well, when you come to an impasse like that, I would highly recommend that you seek closure. You will know that you're not dealing with a narcissist if they give it to you. Um, and it, actually, that was not, it wasn't ever in question in the, in the situation that I dealt with in the last year. It wasn't ever in question that, um, that I was, uh, dealing with a narcissist. That wasn't ever it at all. They, they were lovely, actually. But there were some fundamental differences. And, and there were some places where we weren't going to see eye to eye. And I could just tell. When you've lived long enough, you can just tell how something's going to go. Well, girl, that's also the hazard of my job. I can tell how something's going to go. I can tell what's, what, what needs to happen in a situation. It doesn't mean that I'm always right, but it does mean that I know what feels right for me and I can kind of just like see. So you need to be able to assess that for yourself. So I've said a lot here. But the point is that when you have closure, it helps you to quickly move on. Sometimes you will not get that. You'll have to give it to yourself. And I'm not going to lie. It takes longer because you will turn that over and turn that over and turn that over. I always see clear communication in the best way that I can. And I keep in mind that not everyone is going to communicate the way that I do and that everyone doesn't have my communication style. And in the last year and a half or so, I was really, I really got to be up against someone 
whose communication was very different, they would kind of like sit back and take a minute and need to con c like compute what was happening and, and register with themselves how they felt. And I couldn't be my bombastic self that was like, no, 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 no. Tell me, tell me, tell me. I had to wait. And so I asked for something and it took a minute to get it back, but it came within a week and I got exactly what I needed. There was one word that I was looking to hear in that level of closure. So that's something I would ask you to identify. What you need to hear for your brain to shut off and for the barometric pressure to change. Because prior to having had that word, prior to having had that closure in that situation, I was going to be worried about if I had communicated well or was there an or an area or a lapse. Now, sometimes, guys, we know when we have communicated well, but we are human, so we will second guess ourselves to a certain degree. Now, um, again, <laughs> uh, you live a, a little bit and you start to realize like, oh, okay, this is how this is going or this is what this is. And I very much, um, I very much pay attention to what it is that I'm going to need as the word, but I also pay attention to everybody's different communication styles. Uh, I, when I say that the experience was brilliant for me, it showed me exactly how magical knowing what's really going on is for your psyche because we inflict a lot of pain on ourselves because we will turn things over my mind is incredibly analytical that way where virgo set up in my chart that and that means that i will spend an inordinate amount of time literally dissecting down to minutia something and the narcissist will use that against you that's why they don't give you the closure because they're hoping that they can keep you tethered to them emotionally um when that happens and they will for a while even if you think you're not you will be thinking about them and trying to figure out what happened even if you don't want to be with them you hate them you're sick of them you're over them you never want to see their face again you definitely still will spend time there can i get an amen y'all know what i'm talking about y'all have been there like why do they do that how can that happen da -da -da -da. so i remember i spent the first three months of a breakup many years ago being like what the hell? Like, cause you're so confused. It's a fog. The more distance you put between anybody that confuses you and that person, the clearer you get. And when I tell you when the closure came in within the last year and a half in my situation, what happened was there was an immediate dissipation of the fog. And that's how I knew that my instincts weren't wrong. I knew they weren't wrong and I was acting on them. So I, I had already ended the thing, said, here's what I would love for back from you. Here's what I would love to give you. And here's, you know, the feedback I can offer. Here's how much I value this experience, whatever the case may be. But what I realized is that narcissist uses that because they don't ever want you to feel that sense of relief. Immediately, the connection dissipated. It was almost like a, um, it was almost like a, a Disney movie. You know how they're like, the spell is broken. And this person that I was dealing with was not some evil person to any degree. They were lovely. They were amazing. But the, but, but fundamental differences are that. And that's a very like, kind of like grown up moment there where even if you adore someone like them, cherish value, it's a good business partner, friend, colleague, work husband, work wife, whatever the case may be. If there are fundamental differences and there's going to be fundamental differences in communication, guys, my risings in Gemini, I, that's just something that the first half of my life, because of the narcissistic abuse I went through, I suppressed my need for communication. And if I ever get into any kind of uh, business partnership, connection, bestieship, romance with anybody, and I notice you heard that throat chakra hit that happened earlier here as I was talking. And I noticed that I'm like, Ooh, I don't know if I should say this. Then it's not the right connection for me. It doesn't matter how I don't give a damn if the person is shot literally through space directly into my life. Communication is everything to me. It's everything to me. And after you've been with narcissists that deprive you of communication and silent treatment you and confuse you with behaviors that make no sense and do one thing but say another, that is a whole fiddle fuck that I can't be involved in. And sometimes people will not be as toxic as narcissists. They might not even be toxic at all. But if it makes you feel away, then can you stay? 
can you stay? If you know, like, I'm going to be forever having to mine through and figure out what's going on in the situation. So I set direct objectives. I set a word and I said, angels, this is what I need to hear. And this is going to let the air out of the situation in the best way for me. And then I will be able to move on. And I cannot tell you the night and day difference that happen when the person upon given time and, and allowed to do it at their own pace was able to give me the feedback honest and, and and do it honestly i will tell you in that feedback that not everything was something that i was like uh-huh 100 percent agree <laughs> you know that was not at all it there were there was some pushback it was real adult communication there was pushback i didn't like this i didn't feel this this hurt me and i felt like that was incredibly fair that's one thing about me y'all is that i am fair and if communication's happening i'm in there like swimwear i love it so much and i will definitely uh, pay attention and honor whatever the person is communicating. You will not always agree with everybody. You are not always supposed to agree with everybody. You will feel slighted and hurt in this way. They will feel slighted and hurt in this way. You will think they were acting like this. They will think you were acting like this. Perception is reality and that will be what we do. Our perceptions become our reality. But I was so grateful. When I say take it to the moon, take it to the stars, even to the person, when all of that went down, I was like, oh my goodness, I am so, this is the best it's ever been. It's like having great sex, right? Uh, except none of that was there. It was just a really great communication where I was like, oh, thank you. Oh, and, and it didn't mean that we continue to be in each other's energy fields or lives. We didn't. But it went so well that I was like, I got to talk and teach about this because this is the prototype. It is exactly what I wish for every empath that's ever had a shitty narcissist make them have to do all the heavy lifting. And even if the situation is not toxic or insidious or horrible, remember guys, I was talking to you in one of these videos in the last few days about how we as empaths are so fixated on fixing the huge crisis because of our survival mechanism that even when something is small we're not paying attention and it overwhelms us and so I can tell that I've really started to heal from my narcissistic drama abuse trauma and all that stuff while I still have triggers and some PTSD because that's what those things will leave you with I now can assess when small things are off it doesn't always have to be some huge, you're the big bad monster in the in the, the thing. The person in the past year and a half that I was dealing with literally was wonderful. That was not, the, 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 that there was not an issue regarding were they a sweetheart or a kind or a good human or any of that stuff. That wasn't the issue at all. There were fundamental differences about what we were both going to be able to um, yield or extract and in, in what capacity and what was going to feel healthy and fair for each of us. That was it. Grown up shit, y'all. That's it. They were not the devil. I was not the devil. They were not evil. I was not evil. But here's what happens when communication starts to go awry. It will lead into that. And so I was noticing after you do things with people uh, uh, over and over, <laughs> meaning after you like um uh, have had lots of relationship experience, uh, friendship experience, uh, business partner experience, whatever your situation is, you'll start to notice when something isn't right. And I think this comes with maturity, age, and time as well. Because in my 20s, the decision that I made in the last year and a half regarding the situation is not what I would have done. I would have behaved completely differently. Now, I will say this, uh, just a quick aside. Some of this also has to do with me being aware of my human projector, um, my human projector, my human design, which is projector. Meaning that um, I cannot chase, uh, to chase or to um, pursue even information and clarity at a high speed or repetitively puts me out of alignment with who I am. Okay, so uh, even if you don't understand what that means. If you are having to do a lot of heavy lifting in something emotionally or mentally, then you're not probably in the right space. And even if um, I felt like this connection is beautiful, lovely, I feel like it offers so much. 
one of the things that I notice is that if I'm going to have to seek clarity and like, and, and, and come up with a specific SAT questionnaire to extract certain information, then this is going to become a taxing situation for me in the long run. It wasn't at the time and it never got to that point. That's my point here, guys. Sometimes when you, it's time to move on. Oh, I wish I could pass this eighth house scorpionic energy to you. You have to just move on. You just have to know you have to move on. That's it. Sometimes because we like energies around us or like people around us, we will just be like, I just want to stay forever. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, uh, I just want to stay. I just want to rock. Uh, uh, I just want to rock. You just want to be involved because that's our way. We love connection, right? We love companionship. We love friendships. We love our business partnership. We love our work wife or husband. But if there are fundamental differences about how you guys communicate, um, that's okay. You can work through that. All of us will never have the communi same communication style, but it's going to be really important to not drag yourself through unnecessary future pain. If it's going to always be like little weird misunderstandings and stuff like that. And now I have vision where I can just see that shit coming a mile away. I'm like, mm. because here's what we do too. Just a quick note on this. You juxtapose it against what you know to be maybe your better relationships in your life. And if you have relationships that are easy, some will challenge you. Some people are literally sent in to challenge you and whatever. This was a challenge for me because in as much as I was like in, in the uh, stage of like, this is so perfect and ideal as we all are in most beginnings of any friendships, you know, or connections, what you will realize is like, yeah, we are not exactly the same person and that's really good and that's there to help you grow. And what I was really grateful for and I can forever only sing the praises of this person about is that they were really cooperative when they had their time. And that taught me a lesson that not everyone's going to immediately answer you back and not everyone's going to immediately have a response and that some people get shut down with their emotions. Like I had to learn that my way of communication is not going to be everybody's way. And it's also not the right way for them. Like, uh, I had to just be like, okay, that's, that's not, that doesn't work for you. Okay. So let me, let me sit back and, 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 and do what is right and give somebody time to come to their own conclusion. And when that person did come to their own conclusion in that last year and a half, it was exactly what I needed. The, there was one word, like I said, get your little word in your head. There was one word that I needed to hear that person say. And as soon as they said it, typed it, wrote it, meant it, expressed it, the spell broke. The energy broke. It dissipated. I was no longer in a tense place of angst. I was no longer um, worried that I had you know, done anything that had overhurt their feelings or that my feelings were going to be overhurt because we were on the same page. So get whatever your safe word is. But I had a safe word. I didn't tell them what the safe word was. I told my spirit team, y'all, when I tell you every day that goes by is the more that I'm like, I can't even tell you what I would do without my angels and ancestors, man. They really helped me to rely on them years ago with the narcissist. And in a dark night of the soul, the hermit mode we go through, the reclusive energy, taking our power back, becoming re-empowered, moments of, you know, abstinence if you were in romantic connections or celibacy. We all go through this like purification process. And you think, why did I go through that fresh hell? Well, it was for me to have this experience in the last year and a half with somebody where I, you guys have heard me talk about Versace Versace. That did not go that way. And I did not seek closure or clarity from Gucci, Gucci, Versace, Versace. There's a video I have up here about an encounter I had with someone that was really toxic. Sometimes you just have to shut shit down and get out. And that was like, this is not a drill. It was like the pin was pulled out of the grenade. Get out of here right now. And sometimes your angels and ancestors will tell you that message. And they did with me. They told me exactly how to handle that. But they also told me exactly how to handle this. They said, this person is not your enemy. This person was sent in as a real soulmate and a connection to teach you about how you are, which is not always right and perfect, and about how communication can be, which is better than what you've had in the past, even if it is not exactly ideal. Also to teach you that it's okay for you to want more. It's okay for you to not be satisfied. Empath, that is not a concept 
that we are familiar with. We're always used to taking what we're given, justifying it, making excuses for other people's behavior, and then saying it's okay that we get less and that they're 1000% fulfilled in whatever capacity. We'll just sit over here in the corner and eat our food, right? Um, that's a quote from New York for those of you guys that know. I love New York. She said to some girl that got involved with something, you should have just sat over there and ate your food. Um, so, um, a little bit of a pop culture reference for those of you guys that remember that. But sometimes we just need to be sitting over here and eating our food, okay, and minding our damn business. But we forget because we're so used to dealing with such high levels of toxicity that we can also streamline and ask for exactly what we want. And when I'm talking about that, for me, the thing that I wanted was communication. That's the thing. I'm a sapiosexual 1000%. So if communication, when stuff, like, it's okay if communication stuff is good when it's good, right? When we're talking about all the magic and the whimsy and the galaxies and all that stuff. But if we get into a little bit of uh, interpersonal Personal, human dynamic friction and that communication isn't flowing the same way for me that's just for me again for me and my house I will serve uh, the Lord of communication that is a huge big deal for me and I was always putting out such huge fires with narcissists and crazy toxic people that I could never focus on the minutia of that because they are experts at the skirt skirt but y'all, did you know that you can be skirt skirted in cursive? Very sweetly, you can. <laughs> and you may have to be the one that unravels that cursive skirt skirt and say, okay, so what's really going on here? For me, that matters. For the other person, it may not have been a huge priority. Or for someone in your life, it may not be a huge priority. Or they have never, they don't have the skill set for it. Or it's new for them. Or it's not comfortable. That was what I learned in this, was compassion for everyone's communication style. My style is not the end-all, be-all. And it is not the, the way that it should just be and God will put you in places with people and send soulmates to you that are not like you so that you have to learn a new skill set I had to develop uh, an interesting new skill set about my own patience and about um, understanding and being fair but because the person was doing their own work they were spiritually grounded they were a good human all of that stuff what I was able to get was the best best dismount and closure I've ever had in my life, y'all. Y'all, I never knew I could feel. I never knew there was a dismount and closure like this. <laughs> never knew I feel so good with the words. Girl, I felt amazing. I was like, this is so good. I gotta write a whole little like paragraph about this in the book. This is brilliant. This is what I wanted. It's so funny. I went into that energy and connection thinking it was gonna be one thing and then it turned into another thing and then it turned into another thing and then turned into another thing it took all of these different metamorphoses it was not at all what I thought and I thought it was going to be this but this was what it really was about and that's my favorite part to empath I love 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 working with you guys when I'm doing the readings to figure out like what your relationship's really about because when you know what it's about you stop worrying about it you stop obsessing which a lot of us can do you, you stop giving it so much power this person was bad I'm not bad we literally were assigned to bump into each other to teach each other these interesting things about communication and that's it there was no more we as humans always a girl I have been guilty can I can I get any men we will put 20 on 10 and be like, oh, we're supposed to travel together for the rest of life and teach each other the amazing things. Sometimes a lesson is quick. It's quick. It's quick. It's quick. It's quick. And you can tell what you're supposed to extract from it. I would set an objective. I always do when I go into any connection. This is what I'd like to get out of it. And this is what I hope to have happen. And this is whatever. So just like you would set a business plan, I am so precise about stuff like that. That's just the way my brain works best. But that may not be the way everybody's brain works. And I don't know that all of us think about relationships that way. So it, it, I've meandered here, but I, I want you to understand that having closure can feel just as good as a positive connection that never ends. That closure was orgasmic for me. I don't even think the other person understood how gra grateful I was that that it's so funny it's so funny because again we can go into connections and thinking they're going to be one thing and I got so much pleasure not at all in any other way but pleasure from that part 
the closure was my favorite part of it, to be honest with you. I was like, this was why we're here to do the work. I pay so much attention about the work that you're supposed to do in connections. And sometimes they will be with toxic people and you just, the work that I had to do with Gucci Versace was trust your intuition and get out without explanation to that person. I didn't give that person any explanation of anything. I had told them previously, I always, three, three is my number. So I always pay attention to people's behavior and what they do. And I observe them and I don't chastise them every time. I'll give them one strong pushback. Like, Hey, I really wish you wouldn't do this. This bothers me. And then I let their free will and humanity take over. You can't make anybody do anything empath. I learned that a long time ago. So I will give a gentle pushback. Hey, this is a thing that matters. I'd love to get some insight and clarity to this. If I notice that someone's going to skirt, skirt, me in cursive in full ca all caps in whatever then i'm like okay i see you and that's it that's it and then i leave when it's time to go and but i leave with what i know so i'll tell them hey this is what i learned and i appreciate you for this reason and this is what i would love to know how did that affect you and if you can get to that you will be free in a way that i cannot explain it was the best experience I've ever had in my life. I had known that that person had come in to be the best of something in my life. I, I, there was a crackling energy, like when you hear power lines outside. That's, I hear energy, I hear thoughts, I'm clairsentient and all that stuff. So I, y'all, sometimes it's a mess when I'm walking through crowds with people. But that person came in and man, I was lit up. I knew exactly who they were. I was delighted. I knew instantaneously, you know, like, um, in the Bible where it talks about Jesus and John the Baptist meeting in their mother's stomachs. The Bible talks about this, which is so cool because energy is shared. Soulmates are sent in. It's so real. Jesus and John the Baptist were soulmates and, um, soulmates are not always romantic. And this is uh, another huge lesson for all of us. Right? So when the moms faced each other, which is another thing, guys, our navel, our sacral and stuff like that is how we connect with someone. If you really are intimate with someone, you're facing them. I'm just talking about like a girlfriend conversation with your friend girl, right? Like you'll stand face to face with them. If you can tell someone shady, like a shady female or a shady uh, uh, co-worker or whatever the case may be, like kind of stand askew from them. Never stand directly with your belly button to your belly button because they are literally like, d like uh, siphoning. They can siphon your energy or it's a direct portal to get into your energy. So when I'm holding um, energy with someone like I, that I love and care and is in my space, I will be face to face with them. I will have physical contact or I will like look at them or I can stand in front of them. When I know that I need to protect my energy, I always stand askew from ener people because that's a portal. Anyway, that's the thing. Um, our belly buttons are literally a portal man we come through it. all right so that uh, message i'm down off my soapbox about that john the baptist and jesus met in their mother's stomach and they both did somersaults you know how babies flip in their mom's stomach they both both of the mothers talked about it, like oh my god because they recognized each other's soul when in the last year and a half i met this person and i was going through these paces i knew immediately this is a soulmate i was lit up i was like this is a soulmate ah this is amazing. I wonder what magical lessons and what galaxies we're going to go. And I did all of my whimsical childlike romanticizing that we do like, Oh, this is, uh, you know, it was amazing. Like I was super in and my angels were really clear with me. They said, she is going to be a powerful lesson. This is going to be an amazing connection. And this is going to leave you with incredible intel. But it didn't work the way that I thought it was going to work. It didn't go the way that I thought it was going to go. And there were some fundamental differences that we were never going to get past because it just is what it is. Life be life and circumstances be circumstancing. And we will be ships passing each other in the night sometimes. Sometimes you'll meet someone when they're at a certain point in your life and they're at a certain point in their life. And if you want to make the business still happen, it just can't. Uh, you want to sell the house or they want to, you know, they want to sell you the house. You want to buy it. It just doesn't work. Um, uh, uh, you know, it seems like it might be an ideal match of the romantic situation but there's something that's off because we've been so busy putting out all these huge fires with people before you you never get a chance to kind of just get quiet and say hey how does this feel even though it's not terrible toxic and life ending it wasn't it was lovely it was a lovely experience the whole way through really from start to finish really a really lovely experience i couldn't have asked for better but 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 but, but when that moment of of dismounting closure happened I had nothing but the utmost respect. This person will forever live in my praises and, and whatever, but we were not supposed to like traverse life together. That was not it, you know? And guys, I want you to get quiet with yourself. A quick aside message here. 
you may have in your mind an agenda about how something is supposed to go. That placement for Scorpio in my chart has battered out of me, <laughs> unfortunately, un thinking that I get to keep anybody in the long term. So when I go into a relationship, I'm full octane. When I go into a new friendship, a new connection, a new whatever, I am full octane because I'm like, what do I need to extract out of this? Because I don't know that it's going to last forever. Now, that may sound a little like weird and, you know, uh, PTSD and a little tragic, right? But I actually think the power of my scorpionic placement in the eighth house has made me appreciate, um, excuse me, immediately who someone is when they come in my life. I'm looking for all the delicious morsels right away of how they are amazing or what they're there to teach me or what I'm there to teach them. I do not waste time trying to um, make up problems when there aren't, aren't any. But the second I now notice them, I don't stay forever. Because I have relationships that last 17, 18, 19, 20 years that are in my life to this day. I have a bestie that I've been friends with for eight years and there have never been those kind of hiccups. So what I realized is that all soulmates are not going to just be there and it's all kumbaya. Sometimes they will send in somebody that will be work for you to do. But the long-term connections and relationships that I have in my life are ones where where it works and communication is working and we figure out the style and all of that and then we proceed and go forward if it starts to get real hinky and this is just maybe a message someone needs to hear and you're pretty new into a into a new friendship connection business partnership pay attention to those flags because we're so used to the big huge banners from our narcissistic abuse past we are not used to the little regular flags that happen with everyday people our intuition is a powerful source of direction and what is going to be right and tenable, manageable, and healthy for us in the long run. And it doesn't mean that a person is bad. We got so used to absolutes and all or nothing with the narcissist. This person's amazing. I wish them nothing but the absolute best. I freaking adore them. But I understood that our paths were divergent. It, we had learned exactly what we were supposed to learn. It is very clear to me, but that's because I go in with checklists. I know exactly what I'm looking for. I know exactly what I think I'm there to offer the other person. I know exactly what I think they're there to offer me. I will tell you, though, in any connection, you'll be surprised. It will not go exactly as you plan. The checklist will not all get checked um, for the most part. That's just not how that goes. You know, in my little Virgo ideal mind world, when I say Virgo, the part in my chart where Virgo is very much cares about that level of work organization but that's not always how it goes and I was surprised there were new things that I learned there were things I didn't expect to learn there were feelings I didn't expect to feel there were frustrations I didn't expect to uh, experience it was really interesting but that's life <laughs> that's life and that is what I live for I said that to the person I live for this kind of accelerated growth we were able to get incredible work done on a it's so ironic it, while they, it, while it was one thousand percent a platonic connection, we were able to get work done on a on a sapiosexual level that was um, kundalini and tantric esque. Okay, meaning that there was intense, intense work done anyway on my end, where I came away um, feeling like that's the best. Uh, not only dismount, best closure, best um, disagree, agree to disagree that I've ever had. And I was so grateful, but my angel said, please tell the collective if they ever went through a skirt skirt with someone who was making no damn sense and giving zero clarity, we promise, and you may not want this promise, okay, you may not want to cash this check, that in the future you'll go through a an ending or a dismount with someone where you get all of the clarity. You might not want that ending, right? I, 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 it's not going to say that I welcome it, but I'm very comfortable with that kind of quick movement because of my placement in my chart, which is, guys, I wish you would have known me years ago. That was not how I was. I would have clung on to somebody forever, forever and ever and ever. Amen. I, uh, the narcs that still stalk my channel are like, mm -hmm, amen. She not wrong. <laughs> hey, haters. Um, but, um, that is the truth. My codependency and my lack of self-love would have been like, oh, but you're, you know, I'm thinking of a Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory, 99% pure, right? 
or 89% pure, or 87% pure, or 68% pure, or 1% pure, if we're dealing with a narcissist, right? So we will make all of these excuses in our head for why we should elongate or prolong a connection. But I'm like, "Mm, what are our life objectives? I'm so succinct about stuff like that. You need this, you need this, I need this, I need that. You want this, I want that. We don't agree, or we do, we can make it work, or we can't, bing, bam, boom, bam. It's easy. It's so much easier than you think if you've got a human who's cooperating with you. You will not always get that. And I think that's why we were allowed to be in the trenches to learn how to self-soothe and give ourselves closure. But I am promising someone out there, I don't know, I, it's a weird thing to have to say or even predict, you will come into somebody that you're not going to kick it with forever, but you definitely will extract exactly what you need to. Get the marrow out of the bone. Get the nutrients. Get the densest, richest nutrients. That That's where it's contained is in the marrow of the bone. For my vegans, sorry, y'all, but you know what it is. Um, Get the B12 out of the whatever. Get the chlorophyll out of the leaves. I don't know. Whatever you need to do, vegans. <laughs> but get extract the densest amount of nutrients from the connection. And it only can happen with communication, but it may not happen exactly how you want it. The communication style was not my style, but I had learned to respect it. And I know that it will come in handy in the future because nothing is a coincidence and we have repeating patterns in our life. So in the future, God is going to put in front of me someone else who has that person's exact communication style. And instead of being offended or instead of misunderstanding or instead of being impatient, because as a projector, (laughs) what did Jay-Z say? say I got no patience and I hate waiting mommy get your ass in here that is me that's projector energy all day that's from girls 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 um you know how Jay-Z is (laughs) how he loves his wordplay but he said that and oh no no that's not girls 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 well is it girls 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 or big pimpin I'm not sure either one he says something and he's like, I've got, but there is someone, there's someone out here that's doing a fact check right now. I, I hear your heart working right now. If you're listening to this, I got no patience and I hate waiting. Mommy, get your ass in here. <laughs> what I mean by that is this regarding communication. I don't have patience. I don't. And so God sent this, this creature that is, that was delicate and needed some time into my life so that I would learn some patience because I, in the past was so almost like a bulldozer regarding knowing what I know because I'm really, really anchored into my intuition and no one can shake me anymore. I, when I know something is right or wrong, I know it and I can't unknow it and I can't unsee it. And I'm a dog with a bone. I'm an intuitive detective. Truly. That's what makes me good at my job is I am able to figure out things that are going on in relationships, like forensically. I don't know why. I don't know how, girl. This is just when Jesus decided that this was my gift. And it was a pain in the ass for many years of my life. But it means that I am able to see if something's going to go off the tracks and I can tell like, oh, this isn't going to be good for either of us. Empath. So many times in our life, we overrode what felt good for us. And that is something that I learned after healing. When you heal from narcissistic abuse, you can take time to ask yourself those little tiny, small fluttering questions. Do I like it here? Would this feel good for me if I stayed in this? Or would I feel any sense of frustration, resentment, or bitterness because I would feel whatever, whatever, whatever. You fill in the blank for your situation. And I, in the past, never gave myself permission to ask, do I like it here? Would this be good for me? Would I feel frustrated in the future? Would this be satisfactory? Is this the type of connection I want? And it doesn't mean that it wasn't. It just means that if there were going to be fundamental differences that couldn't be communicated, I wasn't staying. And that is something I wasn't going to negotiate with. I was like, if this is going to be a pattern of behavior and then I'm going to have to be digging this deep, do I think that I can learn and extract from that? Yes, but the rule of three. After three times, I'm not just talking about the rule of three to get out, but like um, if I notice that there's repetitive problems, especially in a new connection, oh, well then that, that that's not a connection that I want to entertain because you have to be so careful about what you invite into your life. Um, do you want some, and, and, and vice versa, meaning the person that I was dealing with definitely had her own spirit team, uh, uh, um, advising her, is this right for you? How do you feel? Do you feel safe? Does this feel good for you? She got to ask her own questions too. 
But what I did was what a lot of us are scared to do because we've never gotten it. As I said, I'd love to do this properly and do an exit interview. And while it didn't happen in the conventional sense, and I know it seems rather clinical and cold, Virgo loves it, but it's not. It is, it is really important to extract all the information you can because when you're in new friendships or if you're dating or if you're in a business situation, what whatever didn't work in the last situation is literally the fertilizer to make the next thing grow. Okay? That might be the title because that's really what I feel like this is. And that's what closure is. It's fertilizer. It may have turned to a pile. It may not have turned out to be what you wanted. But there is still something to extract that can cause the next thing to flourish. And I am an optimistic person. Flourish I shall. Connect I will. Expand I will. And so will they. And so I wanted to leave them with that. And I wanted to be left with that. That doesn't mean you always get that. But I got it this time. And I think I got it because I put in so much work in the past. And my angels blessed me with a beautiful human and soul that was like, hey, this is where the fundamental differences lie. This is how I feel absolutely. Finally, I had absolutes. Finally, I had uh, clarity. And finally, I got that one word, the only thing I needed to hear. And poof, gone. Abracadabra, magic. Voila, magic, right? It was magic. It was a magical experience to have someone participate in the dance that we call life with me. It was a magical experience to both see eye to eye and still not agree. It was a magical experience to have communication that was edifying, but also informative for me. And also it was closure in the best way that it could be. I couldn't have asked for better Soulmates don't always stick and stay, but if they go away and you can get that level of closure, what you will have is a memory you cherish and a human that you wish well forever. There's no animosity. Every quote unquote breakup doesn't have to be the the last thing. Any bestie breakup, romantic breakup. Like I said, I have had people, y'all heard me talk about Kelly recently, one of my videos, someone I dated for many years ago. It was the one, it was literally a, 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 one of the best breakups I ever had, you know? Um, and this situation was one of the best, you know, we're connected, but we're not going to stay connected for this reason, this reason, and this reason. And it was fantastic. I couldn't have asked for better. There was nothing to come on here and scream about or cry about and be like, oh my God, I was treated unfairly. Even if there were slights that I was starting to feel, I used my big girl words. <laughs> I used my throat chakra. That is clear. And I said what I needed to say. But I also paid attention to when I was starting to feel suppressed or shut down or, or, or confused. That doesn't mean, again, because we're so used to gaslighting and toxicity and what these are the words that we have. And I would equate, remember I did a video here where I said, draw your database and make sure that you can, because we will disassociate as empaths from pain and from abuse from people. This was not that. This was not that at all. But there were subtleties that I was noticing. And I was like, oh, oh, well, I don't know that this person may be this much of a fan or really like me this much or whatever the case may be. I was noticing that there were little ways that I was like, oh, well, I wouldn't say that or I wouldn't do that. That doesn't mean everybody's going to be like us. I had to have that experience. And I was on my whole no new friends tour and da 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 and da 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 And I was living in that reality. So God was like, no, we're going to send someone in that's like a sign to you. That is going to be so clear they're a sign that you ha cannot mistake it. And then you will do the work. You have work to do is what I was hearing when that connection began. You have work to do. And y'all, you know me, okay? The writer of A Magical Story, uh, the creator of Fantasy Worlds, uh, the Princess of Narnia over here. I 100% was like, oh, it's going to be this. We could take it to the moon. We could take it to the stars because I'm an empire builder. I'm a projector. I'm a builder. I want to always make it as big as possible. I wanted to make that person and fold it into my life completely. I wanted to put them on payroll. I want, like, I had a whole thing that I was like, I'm going to wait for it and then say it when the time is right and when I feel like we're locked in. We never got to that time where I could be like, this was really the plan because I waited for the subtle nuances of does this work on a basic level day to day? Are we going to be able to communicate and be clear and say the things we have to say? Can I trust when you speak? 
the way that my life is, for me, this is just me, I really value when people are strong and set in their own boundaries and they're firm. Because the way that I process is through a volley. That's specifically my personality type. I like back and forth conversations. It doesn't mean I'm going to listen to what you say and take your advice like per, per se, like line by line and precept by precept. But just the act of volleying ideas back and forth wakes me up. It's stimulating um, and, and it makes me think and it gives me a lot of ideas and it makes me super creative. So I need someone who's grounded in their sacral and who knows who they are because I may be like, what do you think about this? And I need someone who's like, I like that, but I don't love it. And here's why. And I need communication. That's a huge, 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 big deal for me. So I really gauge, can someone stand up to me, really, right? Can someone say the truth to me? Can someone speak the truth to me? Because I don't ever want yes men. If I'm in empire building mode, maybe this is for people that are dealing with business and not just relationship. And I'm like, I want to take you with me to this part of my life where I want to include you in this. Or I want this or that to happen. I need to know that you're going to be able to look at me in moments when things are weird or a plane ticket is canceled or, 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 um, uh, uh, let's say I'm doing a seminar or an event and something goes left and the vendor didn't show up. I need to know that you're able to like have a strategic conversation. I'm looking for generals. See, <laughs> that's what it is in my life. At this point, I'm looking for other people. Even if I'm moving in a general, I'm looking for people that have the capacity to be able to think on their own feet and then add to what it is that I need for me as well and that I add for them, okay? Also, that's another side note here, guys. Know what you bring to any uh, business partnership, relationship, romantic or otherwise, right? I know what I bring. I, you know, <laughs> a lot of the narcissists in our life would gaslight us as though we weren't like contributing in, in, infinitesimally to someone's life and, 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 and to their vibration being raised in their energy signature. We are. Please never underestimate your power. And I was dealing with someone who was equally as powerful. So that that part, right? So uh, this was like, I couldn't have, it was like, an, it was like, it was like two, you know, spiritual gladiators meeting to a certain degree. I was delighted, fucking delighted. It's just one of the best experiences of my life because I realized that it wasn't supposed to be, and, and the best part of it was understanding it wasn't supposed to last forever. It was supposed to be exactly that. Boom a moment in time. I got exactly what I needed from it. I know exactly what lessons I was supposed to learn from it. I learned so much about myself and I hopefully followed the rule of camp. The rule of camp is to leave something better than you found it. And that what I mean by that is as a former Girl Scout, that is the rule of camp. <laughs> if you go to a campsite before you leave, what we would do is we would pick up anything that was like littered around or we would um, we would make sure that we like piled the rocks back or made sure that the fire pit was super cleaned out. Maybe we, we might have got there and there were ashes in it. When you leave a relationship of any kind, if it's not some toxic emergent, I got to get out for my life and my sanity's sake, the rule of camp is something that is followed so that you leave it better than you found it. Meaning you leave them edified, leave them with wisdom, leave them with knowledge, leave them with finances. If that's your thing, leave them with good words and departing because life is short and you never know what will happen. Um, and if someone was good to you and you cared about them and you had love for them, or if someone was a good friend or if they were a good lover, but there were fundamental differences, that doesn't make them a bad person. You don't wish them unwell. I literally specifically in that case, that person doesn't know it, but I literally prayed for them and lit a candle of connection for them in exactly the way that they want it. I have no problem. Never a hater. Ever, ever. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> As Aki says, never, never. <laughs> Y'all know if you know. Never, never. Never. You always... And I did that even for the narcissist. Can you believe that, y'all? So how much more so would I do it for a really amazing human? I I did for the... When I was done with the narcissist and I was like, okay, this is never going to work. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> never, never. I, I asked God to make sure that they had companionship because my little empath soul could not take that they wouldn't have a life partner. I didn't care if they, now my God told me that they would pick the most toxic one they possibly could. So that part, <laughs> but I still prayed for their companionship. And even though I didn't get to prolong uh, the connection in this case, I still prayed 
upon the dismount that that person find exactly what they were looking for in friendship, in relationship, in business ship, whatever they were looking for. Uh, I sealed it for them in the best way that I could. I am, you know, you know, just, just little old me over here sitting in my tree, but I did the best that I could, um, regarding really hoping for them the absolute best, wanting for them the best. You say, but Monette, you know, that's weird. And, and what you guys were good and whatever and whatever. Yeah. But you don't get to keep people. And that was something I was emphatically made clear about upon the entrance of that situation. And my angels were keeping a little internal, like, um, uh, metronome going like, you know, we're going to keep pace in time here, but there will be a time where this has to close up because uh, the way that this is built, (laughs) the way that this is set up is not set to go for 75 years. And sometimes guys, you have to tell the truth to yourself about that. Not every relationship, friendship, business ship, work wife ship, (laughs) you pinky swear bestie ship is going to last forever. But the ones that do should be ones where there are fundamental differences or the, where the fundamental differences can be easily discussed and hammered out and that you are not going to come to an impasse. I could see that there were some huge boulders in our way that just were not going to be moved in the way that I wanted it to. On my end, anything could be moved, rearranged and changed. And for, for we all, I think we all have this kind of feeling for the right person, the right connection, anything could dissipate and be made easy. Right. Um, and, uh, this is another thing that just so struck me. Um, people make rules for people that they consider alpha, uh, excuse me, they break rules for alpha energies and they will make them for beta energies. So kind of take a look and see where you are in any connection of any kind. Is someone making things harder than necessary, then they might not deem you worthy to be whatever that thing is you might want to be or they might not feel like you're a great business partner they might not feel like you're the best bestie if they're making things like weirdly difficult and you don't really understand what's happening that may not have anything to do with you and as empaths a lot of us do that thing that all children do in a divorce like it's my fault it's not always your fault it's just that that might not be their level of um connection or compatibility or understanding or fiscal responsibility, whatever you fill in the blank for your situation. They have their own spirit team talking to them. If they're a healthy person that does their work and they're being guided as to what feels right for them. So don't always internally take it as like, Oh, well I failed here. No, I am eternally optimistic. I know that whatever it is that I'm seeking will be exactly given to me in exactly the capacity that I want it to be because I deserve that and you know how i know that that's true because of this message that i just brought you this message is brought to you by being in the gosh darn trenches and because i've served my time and come out with my ptsd and my war wounds god said i will restore the years that the locusts have eaten if there's something in your mind that you're wanting and you have a vision of a connection you have a vision of a business partnership you have a vision of your book you have a vision of your creative project a vision of maybe your youtube channel Hold that vision, even if it feels like it will never happen. I tell you guys, we all start out here on YouTube with no subscribers. And then slowly, miraculously, and surely, people trickle in one by one. It is this incredible thing. But a lot of us can give up before the work is done. And some people do pull the plug. In relationships, you may have to pull a plug, and that's okay. But you should always start with a vision of what you want to see someday. Just because that connection didn't work, or just because that was going to be something you guys could not traverse, and just because that person wasn't... uh, That's another thing, too, guys. Pay attention to your attraction. Pay attention to their attraction, the baselines of it. Again, because as empaths, we're so used to overriding that because we're putting out fires all the time you're not used to the subtleties and I am so grateful for being away from the narcissist for so many years that I can now pay attention to just basic human connection subtleties of compatibility and what isn't there for the other person and what isn't there for me and vice versa what is there for them and what is is there for me and it has been such an empowering thing to not be in long-term connections with people where we're both not getting our needs met and not living in our, our, our ideal life. That's, and again, I'll leave you with this. It doesn't mean that they're bad and it doesn't mean that you're bad. So I wish for anybody here closure if you need it in whatever situation, whether it's small, minute, brand new, whether it's been a month, two, five years, 
I wish for you closure. If it's a narcissist, you're not going to get it. Hands up, seven up, sis. Don't say I didn't tell you. But if it's a regular good old person like you out here doing the work, an earth angel or whatever, whoever they are, you can get it. It may not come exactly how you want to, okay? Again, back to Jay-Z, right? I'm impatient and I hate waiting. However, I got exactly what I needed, right? I'm thinking of Robin. You might not always get what you want, but someone might sometimes have what you need. Yeah. And it was sweet like honey. I never thought I'd say that about disconnecting, but it was beautiful. It was probably one of my faves. It's definitely going to be in my top three for sure. That's hilarious. Uh, Like I'm predicting the third one. The third one hasn't happened yet. There's Kelly and then there's this person and I could not have been happier. I could not have been more grateful for being given the opportunity to experience this and then to be able to come and teach it to you and tell you it's not always terrible, guys. And sometimes you can leave and feel delighted. And I want you to pay attention to how your energy feels. The second I heard the word, the second I understood the boundaries, right? Whatever that may be in all of our relationships. I have boundaries with my bestie. I have boundaries with my, with my other friend. I have boundaries with, with my husband. I have boundaries with my clients, right? Sometimes those places get blurred, but you are always, you're your first line of defense, right? So you know what works for you and you know what doesn't work for you. You know when you feel skirt skirted. You know when you feel gaslit. You know when you feel suppressed, shut down, hurt, offended. You know when things are starting to go off the rails. My suggestion to you and what I've learned here so very recently as a projector is that I can't afford to get into bitterness. I can tell when I'm about to be like, all right, so you want some fuck shit. When I get to that point, it's too late. So now I dismount way before I get there. I dismount when I don't feel any way, when I don't feel like anything I wasn't taken advantage of. I was, I don't feel any of that because I dealt with all of my emotions when they were little flutters instead of it becoming the huge avalanche. You guys know it starts with a pebble, goes to a rock, it goes to a boulder, and then it's an avalanche. So in order for you to stay out of a place of frustration, bitterness, disappointment, or sadness, don't let it get to the avalanche. I noticed a few pebbles. And some people could say, did you overreact? My past self would have said that because I was a glutton for punishment. I did not at all. I did exactly what was right for me and ironically for them. (laughs) Uh, So that there could be a wide berth of creation for them to go manifest exactly what was exactly the right um, course of action for them. And for me to manifest exactly what is the right course of action for me. Well, sometimes out of our previous codependent energies, we'll want to stay connected to someone that feels good, that feels like home. Sometimes God will send you in someone that feels like home. That is a real soulmate. And they feel that way so that you can do the work with them. Also, I made another video where I talked about letting them be the crash test dummy. Let the NPC be the crash test dummy. I watched somebody else not dismount when they should have, when something was delicious to them, magical, enchanting, whatever the words were. I watched my covert, you know, ex. She had an opportunity. She knew that a situation was going to take her into an undertow. If you guys are familiar with riptides and currents, there's an undertow where the current is so strong and the water is moving in different directions at the top than at the bottom. And literally your feet can get sucked under and it will pull you under and it can take you a mile down the beach within a matter of a minute or so, right? You're underwater the whole time too. You're just like ripping and running. It's a real thing. And so there is an undertow. And sometimes there are certain places like where a bridge is crossing or whatever, where it's stronger than others sometimes there will be soulmate connections that come into your life that will cause you to be in an undertow there will be sometimes where you're like i surrender to this holy father right but if it starts to be wild and woolly and you start to notice a few little prickles then can you surrender now my old self would have been like yes i surrender to this (laughs) yes I love a surrender, y'all. Sis, I live for a surrender. And if someone's delicious enough to surrender into, if a situation, a business opportunity is like, ooh, it's too good to pass up, then you will want to surrender. But I watched a covert narc surrender to fuckery and toxicity, low vibrational energy. I also remember having conversations with that covert narc where I was hearing the little pebbles that her angels were throwing at her soul, that the person that she was connected to was really toxic and was really bad for her. Now, that's not the situation at all in my case, but I watched her ignore the fact that 
you can have this connection with the soulmate because the person that she connected to was a soulmate. You can have this connection with the soulmate, but it's to teach you something. It's to serve a purpose. And girl, I heard it like, be like the Marines, get in and get out. It was a reconnaissance mission. Sometimes these soulmate connections are reconnaissance missions, y'all. You're just supposed to be in it and then be out of it. <laughs> be in and out, sis. You're supposed to be in and out. That's it. And my old self in all of my codependency would have never. I would have been like, nah, this is too good. Good. I surrender to this. I'm here forever, Holy Father. But if you don't listen, there's a part of that song where it says that I was so attracted to the song, guys. The song is called Holy Father by Mayor Khan and uh, somebody else. Um, but hold, hold on one second, guys. I was so attracted to this song. When I heard it, I played it on repeat. Uh, the person I was around played it on repeat to me, um, almost like a good um, a mom. It was really sweet. It was almost soothing to me. And so if I was in a state of high anxiety, um, they would perceive it because they're really in tune and really spiritual. And they would play the song. I noticed that, that they did that. And I just, I thought it was really sweet. Um, I really appreciated that. If you're listening, thank you. That was really adorable. Uh, so, so it made me feel very loved and nurtured because they could sense like, my anxiety because I do struggle with anxiety guys and so they would like put that on anyway this song I don't know why I loved it so much I loved it because I loved anything that kind of like intermixes our spirituality with love like I love the idea of understanding that love is a spiritual experience that's it that's it that's what I'm after love is a spiritual experience in any form you loving your child how many mothers can relate and fathers that's a spiritual experience loving a partner that you're really compatible with spiritual experience loving a bestie that it's easy with spiritual experience loving your career and job spiritual experience if you can get to those levels right loving the work you do loving the money you make loving the body you're in like think about pilates and yoga burkham yoga that's a spiritual experience, right? So there's so many ways. And I um, think that love is the greatest spiritual experience. I am such a romantic, y'all. Such a sap. So live for love in every way. And I treat every connection I have to the best of my ability in that way. I don't, I don't always get it right. But that song kind of crosses over what I think love is. <laughs> there are some parts in there where like an ex is talking to you. Like, I still want you big. <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Maybe I'll do a reading to that, to that song. But the point of it is there's a part in there where he says, um, chew me up, spit me out, make me stand on my feet. I surrender to this. Do what you want with me. Oh, oh, oh. Holy Father, hey! But then there's another part where he's like, my Lady Gaga's got me in my feelings. That's the part that I want you guys to avoid when it's time for closure. If you start to get in your feelings and you're like, but wait a minute, and you're asking yourself too many questions, it's over. It's almost like that song came into my life as a marker for me on how to handle the situation. I can feel the exhilaration. I can feel all the connection. I can be like, chew me up, spit me out. I surrender to this. I'm here, I'm in, I don't care. But also... The wise part of me was like, eh, if I'm in my feelings over this, then I need to figure out why I'm in my feelings and what the lesson is so that I don't overstay my welcome. And then this turns into bitterness. I adore this person and will want to think about them well for the rest of my life. I will want to know that they are doing well for the rest of their life. I want them to have simply the best, none of the best, better than all the rest. And I said that and I meant it. And that is not anything that we usually get when we're like, I don't want to really necessarily be connected or it's not going to be healthy for us to be connected. But man, do I want you to win? Never wanted anybody to win more. That's really a powerful spiritual experience. So give yourself room and permission as you go into your connections of any kind to allow them to evolve into whatever they're supposed to be. And even if you go in with a checklist like me, maybe there is room for that not to be filled with so much rigidity because yes, I may have had my checklist, but it didn't turn out the way that I thought it was going to. And yet, and still it turned out better than I could have ever hoped. Closure makes you float. <laughs> I actually feel giddy. I feel like, ah, this is what can happen in the heights of humanity. Again, tantra levels of closure. <laughs> like I thought it was going to be one thing. It turned out to be this 
And I couldn't be more grateful because it was probably my greatest gift. I feel like my angels and ancestors gave it to me. They were like, sis, we sent this in for you so that you can see what it's like on the other side. And also, it was a reward for me listening to those little pebbles that came at my soul that were like, oh, oh, okay, I understand. I get it now. I get it. And when I watched the covert narcissist ignore it, I remember her talking to me and being like, this person did this, this, and this. And she was starting to question some indiscrepancies and some, you know, things that weren't matching up with what she felt the person was or whatever. And that was her signal, guys. And for anybody listening, it's yours too, to get out that she had something else to do. Because what happens if you don't leave in the right timing, dismounts matter so much, guys, you will overstay your welcome. And maybe, like, how many of us have been in a situation, like, I counsel this all the time. People, like, will start, like, a friends with Benny situation. Then they lie to themselves that that's all that they want. And then the sex is whatever. It's great. It's good. But you're in. Either way, you're invested. Once you start sleeping with someone, that's alchemy. That's sexual magic. So y'all can't think that you are practicing Christians. You're practicing sex magic, okay? When we're mixing our fluids and all that stuff, it is sexual magic. So then you get involved. Now you're in love with an F-boy. And you're like, how did I get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. You got there because you didn't listen when he didn't return your call. You got there when he go. You didn't listen when he ghosted you and didn't give explanation. You got there when he said one thing and did another and you overrode it. Those are the pebbles, guys. Those are the little things that will lead you to know that you might need some closure in a situation or you, or you might need to end something and get to the point of closure at some point. But a lot of us out of our codependency, a lot of us out of our desire to feel connected. And y'all, when I tell you, nobody loves connection more than me. Nobody. Okay. I love connection, but I'm kind of snobby. I like it with people that are really kind of smart. <laughs> that that matters to me a lot. I'm a sapiosexual. So if I don't feel stimulated by you, I'm not paying attention. I don't care what you look like. I don't care whatever. Um, and so the people that I allow into my life and the soulmates that God sends me, I've been so lucky. They've been so juicy and delicious for my mind, you know, for my mind. I just was like, oh, this is so great. I felt so nourished. I felt so seen. It was amazing. And you're like, well, Monette, then why not just stay and stay forever and ever? Because sometimes you will overstay your welcome even in that. I got the best, juiciest information what I extracted from that connection will serve me in education and all that for the next year and a half to two years it was brilliant I could not have asked for more sometimes you have to know when you got the best you could get but when you ignore the signs of like f-boy behavior with somebody even if like this was this was not f-boy behavior this was not even this kind of rodeo at all but I'm talking about with with my ex ignoring that like the person she was going to connect with was super super toxic or the karmic y'all know all these words I'm so over all the words and the triggers of that but let's just say an ex connected with somebody else and you can maybe see the red flags they could see the red flags what was so interesting about that situation is I could see the red flags and I knew that she could see them and I watched her look at them and then ignore them and I learned from other people's mistakes. I decided to not do that. I said, if ever presented with a similar connection or opportunity, I will not ignore anything. I don't give a damn what I think or feel because I watched how it turned into a shit show for her. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, I don't want that. And guess what I got? The opposite end. No shit, no show. Just closure. Go, go, go. It was beautiful. No drama, no craziness. No absolute hatred and vitriol. No wishing death on each other. None of that. I adore. And I know that seems so maybe like cognitively dissonant to say, but it's the truth. Um, This is a fantastic person that's going to be a fantastic person that will continue to be a fantastic person throughout all of the universe and the galaxies. The thing about it is, is were we fully compatible? Was that person exactly for me? No. Give yourself permission to understand that empath um, in the capacity that I needed or wanted. It doesn't mean that there couldn't be some kind of, you know, lingering connection or whatever, of course. But be okay knowing that you are allowed to want things too. You know, often people have looked at us as like, you know, especially those past connections, like I'm settling for you. You don't have to settle for anything. And no one has to settle for you. That's that, that part, sis. Free will exists. No one needs to settle for you if they feel like they're settling for you and you don't need to settle for anybody. You should be exactly in the friendships, the business partnerships, the careers, the loverships, relationships, marriages that you feel work for you. You deserve to have it exactly your way. Universe is Burger King. Exactly, exactly your way. Okay? But do not 
overstay. If you notice things aren't working out, be okay with walking away. I always say it. I mean it so much. I wish I could give you the part of me that has no fucks. Okay? It doesn't mean that I don't care about people or I don't love people. I do. And I love them deeply. That's why my energy is precious and I understand that and I want you to get that. I know how much I will up-level someone's life just by being proximal to them. Just by being around them, okay? I know that sounds crazy and cocky AF, but empath, if you don't better understand your resources and your energy just by being in someone's life, I'm not talking about finances. I'm not talking about physical things. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm talking about my NIG. It's brilliant, okay? It's not always perfect, but I have definitely cultivated it, and so have you. So I know how I pour into somebody. And you have to be careful who you keep because does everyone deserve that level of energy? If they don't want to give you whatever the energy is that you need for whatever reason in whatever capacity. And it doesn't mean that they're bad and it doesn't mean that you're bad. It just means that you both are being grown ass adults and honest. And I could not respect that more. Your covert narcissist, your ex-narcissist, malignant, whatever, was never honest with themselves. And a lot of people aren't honest with themselves about exactly what they want. I think the older that you get, the more clear you get. I've had a lot of clarity in the last few years of exactly what I'm looking for in so many different areas of my life. And uh, it's not that you're rigid and you're like, I'm not going to settle. But here's the thing. Relationships of any kind cost something. So if you're going to allow someone in your life, they will take up time, energy, space. They will have requirements of you emotionally, financially, uh, spiritually. And you will be, I'm a covering to my partners, to my to my connections connections to my friends to my lovers I'm a covering to the to those people and they can cover me right too and what I mean by that is that I only seek out connections that I know or I indulge let me say that because the connections are often sent into me so I don't even know if I seek them out so much that's so interesting the way that it works for me is people usually like you know the, the projector in me invites energy in so that's what I've noticed I didn't realize what was happening before but now I'm looking at it and I'm like oh people gravitate to me for this reason so you figure out your thing but connections and I <laughs> get together because um there is some kind of edification and upleveling that we're both going to be able to do for one another. Every relationship is transactional. You may not like to hear that empath because we're like, oh, you know, love unconditional, limerence and happiness forever. No, all connections are transactional. We all are wanting to get something from the other person. If you're honest about yourself, my work in studying Robert Greene, um, uh, the 48 Laws of Power, the Art of Seduction, it is what it is. We're not going to rewrite human nature right? We can be compassionate. We cannot be avaricious. We cannot be uh, psychopaths. We can be none of those things, right? But we're not going to override our human nature. You go in wanting something. They come in wanting something. Be honest about that. I learned that many years ago with a soulmate of mine who um, you guys have heard me talk about, Jan, and he taught me about negotiating from the driver's seat regarding being in any connection. We all have things we want to extract. And and I loved it with him because I'm a straight shooter. I don't do like a lot of like some fusion and beating around the bush so his way of putting it to me about like contracts and what relationships really are taught me so much about the real truth of it it was like stripped down to brass tacks it was a very kind of like professorial way to look at it and I was like that makes a lot of sense to me and I think a lot of us go in not realizing that there will be an energy exchange that is given so before you take on another person fully totally and completely understand that it will cost you something and it's going to cost them something to have you in their life too they're gonna have to make the effort the energy the connection the reach outs all the things y'all know what it is y'all know what it do y'all know what it is and that is expensive so ask are they fulfilling you completely or do they have the capacity to do so can you fulfill them completely do you have the capacity to do so are you uh, each other's ideal counterpart is there room to grow are they willing to do the growth work with you or are they going to be toxic for you because sometimes like in the past with that ex who i noticed she took on someone else's karma, one of the 48 laws of power, and stare clear of the unfortunate and unlucky. And she took on someone else's karma because she put somebody in her life and she didn't pay attention to the red flags and she didn't shut it down and seek the closure when it was the appropriate time. Not everyone's going to be karmically toxic for you, but any relationship that you get into, you will take on some level of that person's karma. So think about your bestie, for example, my bestie. If there's stuff going on with her, her family, her life, 
I'm helping her transmute and take that on. That is the contract that I signed up for. It's an assignment I want to do. It's something that she does for me too. She stops her life. I have a lot of procedures and surgeries coming up here shortly. She flies down every time to take care of me. I have a whole husband, but she makes sure that she's here. I'm so blessed with the women and the friends in my life. And so that is something where it costs her something to be attached to me because part of my karmic signature is this period of sickness that I've had you guys get it it's not always like they're evil and their karma's befallen me evil is clear as the look on his face <laughs> you know it's not that dramatic it's just the reality of a thing if you have a friend who's sick you're going to be a support system if you're a good human for that friend who's sick. So flip it and reverse it that way. My bestie has taken on, to a certain degree, my karma regarding sickness. That doesn't mean that she's sick. She's actually very healthy and able-bodied. That's not the issue. But it means that in loving me, she has decided to infuse herself into my life. And she loves me so much. And she is such a magical empath that she's like, I will be by your side. In all of this and in every step of the way, in every surgery, in everything, she has been. Whether it was physically here, whether it was sending me grocery, every time I get sick, I can't even sneeze without her sending me a package, uh, an inhaler, <laughs> antibiotics. I have never felt so loved, nurtured, and taken care of in my life. But that's because we had a cosmic assignment with each other. We signed up. To do this work with each other and so if she's got a problem we ride until dawn that's our saying right i mean we ride at dawn right so i'm riding for her we've had real moments in our life where we were figuring out stuff and we were having our little sleuthing moments and it was amazing i adore her for that when i was going through my breakup with the covert narc she had to take on the karma and the weight of my depression and she sat at the beach with me and did a funeral and was like if you need me to build a pipe bomb i got you boo like i adore her she carried weight for me when I was heavy. That's why you need to be thinking about how you get into these relationships, these new friendships, these new connections, these new loverships, whatever they may be. Are you willing to carry the weight for that person when their life becomes heavy? Because if you're in your life, in their life, you will do it. And if you are willing, then what's in it for you? What, Mona? What's in it for me? That's selfish. Why would we ask that? Nah, that's right. I uh, think nothing is wasted. I worked in a collection agency for many years. And while I was a terrible collector because I cannot fleece people, I am too compassionate and I just want to give them my money. Like that's literally, I literally paid someone's bill one time, an old lady, uh, and I got in trouble for it because I was like, I just... I just felt bad. I am like, take whatever you need. Okay. That's a tourist in me. Like, I just want everybody to be happy and have their, their the financial and physical, you know, financial needs met. Um, but, um, I ended up working in the business office cause they were like, we can't have you out here cause you are not collecting nothing. And so they promoted me to the business office off the floor. <laughs> I don't know. It was really funny. But what I learned being a collections agent for the 14 seconds that I was, was a thing called a whiff them, which is what's in it for me. In order to get the person to pay the bill or to carry the debt or to carry the karmic debt or whatever, you fill in the blank, you had to let them know why they needed to do that. Like, I will be able to remove this off your credit or this will not get flagged to your credit or whatever, right? So essentially, high key, low key threats or help. I ended up working for the credit bureau. So I worked for TransUnion, Experian, and, and, and whatever. Um, and Equifax, and I would call them and talk to them, and I, I would be the person that really removed things once people's bills were paid. So that was, I really loved that. My little empath soul loved being able to be like an avenging angel <laughs> once all of that was cleared up. It was a much better fit for me than making, <laughs> being a collector. But my point in saying all of that is that um, there is a, there is a, uh, there is, we all need to know what we're going to extract out of things, meaning relationships are transactional. My bestie needs to be able to call me and to get support in whatever capacity. These are the unwritten and spoken, actually, because we said a lot of words. One of the other things that I got after that covert narcissistic friendship ended, um, and that was a big, hot mess of mixed emotions and overcross boundaries and wildness. But one of the things that I got out of that was super clarity, a super clear, strictly platonic friendship with a person 
person that absolutely adores me. And we went into it with words, with clarity, with proposals. I know that seems extra. And I always wonder why I got that experience. And they said, because your experiences in the past were so terrible, back to the beginning of this video, that we wanted to make sure that you knew how sweet life could be, that you would have a bestie that loved the absolute life out of you and life into you, that said yes, that supported you and was gentle with you. When I go out in the world and I have these new connections, I always juxtapose it against what I know to be a warm, nurturing space, which is that connection. Because I've never felt so loved. I've never felt so cared for. I've never felt berated. I've never felt picked apart. I've never felt those things. And if there have been moments where anything's come up weird like that, we've addressed it directly with communication. But what happened was, as we got into our bestie ship fully with eyes open, fully sober, fully, and when I say sober, I mean like fully aware, fully with wherewithal, not just like drugs and alcohol. I don't mean that, but fully just like cognizant and aware. And there were words and there were promises made just like almost like a marriage. Like I will take care of you this way. I will do this. And then there was even a proposal because my bestie's magic as shit. And I love that. Right. But also that was something my little Lisa Frank heart needed. I'm a whimsical, you know, uh, inner child focus kind of person. And if I can do that for somebody, I will. But it's not all kumbaya. My bestie didn't know when we became besties that she was going to have to go through a period of my life where I would be heart broken, heart smashed, not just broken, extricating myself from a covert narcissist without closure. She didn't know that she was going to. Okay, hold on a second. Guys, are we still recording? All right. I just got a flash on my phone. It was too hot. Ooh, something got too hot. Mm -mm, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> she didn't know that she was going to have to go through a heart smash with me. The biggest heartbreak of my life, walking away from someone that I had built family with that did not give a damn about me, all those realizations. And she really didn't know that right on the back of me healing from that, that she was going to go through me losing my life almost and have to deal with all of that. But when she signed up for our bestie ship, she said to whatever her angels and ancestors were that dispatched her in my life, I, I want to take this on. I love Monette so much that whatever she goes through, I'm going to go through with her. And recently reaffirmed it to me, uh, just probably as recently as yesterday, or maybe this morning, where she's like, anything that happens to you, I'm with you. Ride or die. You know, we have this really toxic idea with Bonnie and Clyde and ride or die. No, my bestie is 1000% ride or die with me, but she agreed to take on my karma. And I agree to take on her. So that means that if she's got stuff going on, like I said, with the family lamb, I will be there. Or whatever she's got going on, I will be there. My bestie is also a survivor of cancer and stuff like that. I was not with her at that point in her life. But were I to be or were anything, God forbid, like that to happen in her life, then I'm there. That's not a question. And that's, people take relationships really lightly. No, 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 no. You sign it up for something. Whether it's a, whether it's a boski, whether it's a bestie, well, no matter what it is, you're signing up to be with that person. So you need to make sure that you're extracting what makes you feel validated and good. And for whatever reason, there's an actual exchange that works for me and my bestie. I didn't ever ask what's in it for me. She gave me what was in it for me. She always made it easy and apparent that she was in it for me. <laughs> that part. Is the person that you're in connection with in it for you too? And what's in it for them from you? Be so very honest with yourself, empath. More honest than I think that we're often called to be. You do not have to be anywhere where you're not getting your needs fulfilled completely. And not every relationship will fulfill your needs completely. There may be lapses or moments or things that you wish you could tweak. But for the most part, it should be easy and there should be communication. So even if you're in a relationship and you're thinking about getting into a new one, think about what that person comes with and do you want that? I don't ever get into any soulmate connection without knowing that I'm willing to take on whatever that person has. So even in this one where I'm talking about the dismount and the closure and all of that stuff, I had already signed up. I was like, all right, I get it. This is the person that you guys have assigned me. Whatever they come with, they come with. I'm going to be with them for as long as life allows or as long as they allow me to be in their life or as long as it's appropriate for me to be in their life. But what I'm not going to do is overstay my welcome when I can see that they have a new path or trajectory to do. That is the big lesson too that I took away from all that covert narc drama and trauma. When you love something, let it go. Truly, truly, sis. 
truly, truly, actually let it go. Not on purpose. Don't push it away. Don't be a dick. Don't be a whatever. But if you could see that someone is going to flourish in a different way, real love is letting them go flourish. I have nothing but the highest expectations for that connection that I started this video talking about. It will be exactly what it needs to be for that person. They will have the most exquisite and magical life that they could ever have. I think of them almost like a child in a way. And when I say that, meaning like, you know how you will wish nothing but the best for a kid that you loved? Like that energy of like, you know, um, I hope you dance. That's exactly the song that's playing in my head. Uh, for that person is I want you to do exactly what you need to do be who you need to be and dazzle the world because you're fucking dazzling I think that when you leave connections with that level of light and levity in your heart for someone it will be returned back to you what that means is that whatever it is that I need whatever next soulmate comes in for me will be dazzling because I wish dazzling for someone else well, Monette, what about the narcs and the, you know, like, and, and they're with the karmics and, and the karmics are mean to you. And yeah, 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 yeah. I also wish dazzling for them too. <laughs> for that narcissist, I also wished that whoever they needed to go on their next soulmate journey with would dazzle them too. I cannot control what their karma will do. That definitely probably had an effect on what that turned out like. But I feel really confident about this human currently um, that whatever happens for them in the future will be fantastic because they're a good person, you know? So anyway, guys, that is my rant. Be careful of the company you keep, but also know that if you're going to keep company, you better keep company as stand up. <laughs> Show up and stand up. Participate in their life on a regular basis. Ask questions about their friends and their family and what matters to them. Be interested in the things that are occurring for them. Be excited when they have a win. Don't be a hater. Support them. Because you made that contract. That's a soul contract. A soulmate is a soul contract. And if you sign that contract, then you will be held to a responsibility of showing up for them. What's in it for you is that they will feed your soul and water and nourish it in their own ways too. But what's in it from them, for them from you is that you are responsible to do the same as well. That is your job to do with them. So know what you're getting into. And if something is throwing pebbles at you, understand that it doesn't need to get to the avalanche stage for you to say, it's okay to walk away. I guess this isn't going to work the way that I thought it was going to. And that's okay. That's not you being petulant or bratty. That's you being wise and avoiding potential pitfalls, danger, and avalanches that you will not be able to recover from. Okay? Under toes, being buried under snow. It's hard to come back from that. You can uh, brush off a pebble on your shoulder. You can't sometimes dig your way out of an avalanche. Some people have. But then now that's a new trauma to process. Does that make sense? I think that's the real point here. Thank you, angels. <laughs> Don't give yourself new traumas to process by ignoring the pebbles. People are not all meant to cause and leave you trauma. I don't have trauma about this situation. There's nothing to talk to my therapist about. It was handled with my own intuition and my ancestor and angel team on the front end. It doesn't even get to the back end. This isn't going to get to my deep logs. Of, oh, God, they did it. They got me. No one got me. I did not. I was not gotten <laughs> because I protected myself. Empath, you are your first line of defense. And it doesn't mean that the person is bad. It just means that for whatever reason, there's a reason for you to be like, oh, that's a pebble. Oh, 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 there's another one. Pay attention and then get out before you're under the snow. You feel me? All right. I love you guys so much. Closure. It helps you f be free and it helps you grow. I love it. I love it so much. And I'm wishing for anybody that didn't get closure with a really toxic situation that in the future, something is much lighter for you and you're able to use your words, your throat chakra. My Gemini rising implores you to do so because I can tell you there is nothing greater than good communication. It's kind of like my favorite thing in every single way. All right. I love you guys. Come back and join me next time. And we'll continue to get closer together and to evolve together.